Hello everyone, my name is Zia, I am lead instructor at AI Sciences. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic as you know that artificial intelligence and data science is doing wonders in the domain of medical imaging or medical image classification. So we are bringing a project in which we will try to classify if a particular patient has brain tumor based upon the MRI scan or not. So as an input, we will take a lot of MRI scans, MRI images, and on the basis of those MRI scans or MRI images, we will try to predict if this particular patient has cancer or not. For this, we will be using deep learning, we'll be using PyTorch. So if you're new to these technologies, you're more than, well, you're more than welcome to watch this tutorial. Um, so um, the rundown for today is we'll be starting from importing the data sets, we'll be transforming the data set a little bit, then we'll be creating the convolutional neural network, such a deep neural network which is specialized in dealing with uh, imagery, image-based data sets, right? Uh, so inside CNNs, we will be creating convolutional layers, pooling layers, fully connected layers, and we'll be writing the forward propagation function. If these terminologies uh, are sounding a bit fancy to you, but for then then just wait for a minute, right? Uh, then write we'll be writing the function for training of the whole training uh, function will be written and inside that training phase we'll be writing the loss function we'll be picking up the loss function the optimizer the activation function and finally we'll be reporting the error as well so that is going to be our agenda for today so without wasting any time let's straightforwardly move to our uh, google collab we are using google collab as an ide over here for obvious reasons because google collab provides us the facility of free gpu uh, and moreover, importing the data set at Collab is really easy. For example, my data set is already available here in my Google Drive, right? So I don't have to download it from anywhere or something like that. I'll, if you check out this folder that is called Brain Tumor Data Set, inside this folder, I have two further folders. One is Brain Tumor. Uh, inside the Brain Tumor, I have all the MRI images that are related to Brain Tumor that for, for those patients who have Brain Tumor, right? And if I go to the Healthy folder, these are the MRI scans of those people who do not have the brain tumor or brain cancer, right? So this is the data set, very simple data set that I have, the image-based data set, right? Now I'll go back to my um, Google Collab. So here, um, I'm importing a lot of libraries over here. Don't worry, I'll be explaining each and every library later on whenever the usage of any library will come into play. Uh, if you'll be facing any error, any import error, which means any library is not installed in your directory of Google Collab, all you have to do is you'll have to say uh, excla exclamation mark or it is also called magic sign. So magic sign pip, then install, and then write the name of library that you want to install. For example, here I'm, inst I'm installing split folders library that I'm using over here, right? Cool. So installations are done. Uh, and by the way, don't worry, you will get all the code that um, I'm using over here uh, inside this um, um, inside the description of this video, right? So uh, moving on, uh, I'm importing NumPy for uh, mathematical calculations, Matplotlib for data visualizations, copy library to copy uh, uh, the arrays, OS libraries to deal with the operating system, Torch to work with the tensors, PIL libraries to uh, PIL image library to work with the images. Uh, then data set to create the data sets and to create the data loaders as well later on. Uh, then Torch VN is also being imported so that I can work with the VN, computer VN based technologies of Torch. Uh, I'm using transforms so that I can perform different times of, uh, types of transformations on the images. Uh, then reduce uh, LR on learning rate on Plateau. So if my model will hit Plateau at any time, I can reduce the learning rate. And again, these terminologies might sound a bit fancy over here but so so wait for a minute when i'll be explaining the code hopefully they will make sense uh, then i have neural network library the base library for the deep neural networks that that i'll be importing in cnn and class uh, image folder library split folders as the name suggests it is used to split the folders and then i have function library optimization library well clear okay then um you first of all you'll have to run this line to mount your google drive with your Google Collab. So, which means that you'll have to provide the access uh, to your Google, Google Collab. I mean, you'll have to provide the access of your Google Drive where your dataset is 
to your Google Code app, right? So you, when you will run this cell, it will ask you for authentications. You will auth authenticate that, okay, I'll, I, I, I can provide the access of my uh, my Google Drive to Google Colab, right? So once it is done, then your Google Drive will be mounted and you'll be see it over somewhere over here, right? I have not mounted over a mount, I have not mounted it over here because I've already run the code, so I don't need that. Uh, once that is done, then if your file is already in zip folder, if, if the data is in zip folder, then all you have to do is you'll have to provide the path of that zip folder and zip folder will be extracted automatically inside your Google Drive. You don't have to download the data and upload the uh, extracted version of the data. No, you can extract it inside the Google Drive as well. So this is the code for extracting the zip file, right? Once it is done, done these two steps are optional. If you have already, already taken these steps or your data, data is already in extracted format, then you don't have to run this cell, right? Cool. Once it is done, then by using OS library, operating system library, we are going to read the directory, right? We are going to see what is inside the directory of brain tumor data set. Uh, so we are listing the directory. And inside the brain tumor data set, we have two folders, brain tumor and healthy, as we have seen previously. And then here we are getting the path of that directory, right? Once the path is stored in data directory, then we are splitting the folder, which means we have to create train and test split of both of the folders, healthy folder and the, the, the brain tumor folder, right? So this split folder will create the train test split with the ratio of 0.8 and 0.2, which means that 80% of data will go for training set and 20% of data will go for testing set. Fine. And then it will create another folder with this name, brain, uh, content slash brain. Uh, now this brain folder will have further four folders um, training for training set for brain tumor set testing set for brain tumor set and then training set for healthy data set and testing set for healthy data set right so train test split for all for for both of the classes right and now this data directory variable is storing the updated path of our train test splitted folder right cool then we are creating the transform uh, inside the transform, we are resizing the image. So it is quite possible the image, images that we read will have different sizes. So we want to standardize the size, right? So I'm choosing 128 by 128, which means that my image will have 128, 128 rows of pixels and 128 columns of pixels. Then I'm say, saying that half of the images with probability of 0 0.5 means half of the images should be randomly horizontally flipped. Uh, why am, am I doing that? My data set might be very standardized data set, right? But what if the image that is coming for testing is a bit rotated, a bit flipped or something like that? So I want to add all the, uh, you can say variations of possible testing set, possible testing images into my data set, right? So I'm, I'm simply randomly uh, flipping the images horizontally and vertically as well, right? Moreover, I'm also rotating the images as well at the degree of negative 30 to positive 30, right? Uh, then creating it to, uh, sorry, transforming it to tensor, the whole data transforming it to tensor so that it can work with our PyTorch. And we know that if the if the data is available in tensors, then we can work with the GPUs as well. Otherwise we cannot. But with NumPy or with traditional Python list, we cannot work with the GPU, GPUs. Uh, normalizing the data with the mean and, and standard deviation available over here, you can check it out. And then, this whole thing is available in the object of transform. And here we go. From Tosh VN datasets image folder that we imported in the beginning, we are saying that uh, perform all the transformations that we stored over here onto the training set and perform all the transformations on the validation set or the testing set as well, right? So now all the transformations that we created over here are performed on our data set. So now our data set is ready and if you check it out, its image is resized to 128 by 128, randomly horizontally flipped, randomly vertically flipped, rotated at negative 30 to positive 30 uh, degree, and it is normalized as well and they are converted to tensors as well, right? Right, so our data set is ready and if we, we want to visualize the data set, this is how our data looks like after transformation, right? Right, we are good to go. Now, here comes the main uh, main thing from where you can say the actual war begins. So here we are saying that my batch size is going to be 64, which means that in one go of training, in one forward and back propagation trip, 
I will send only 64 images, right? And after 64 images, after forward propagation, when the back propagation will happen, the weights will be updated according to or on the basis of the learning of these 64 images, right? I'm not going to send the whole data set. I have thousands of images over there, almost 5,000 images. I'm not going to wait for 5,000 images to go in forward propagation and then updating the weights. No, I'll update the weights after every 64 images trip, after trip of every 64 images, right? So the batch size is going to be 64 and then I'm creating the training loader and validation loader or testing loader. Uh, so these loaders will actually create the batches of the images, batches of 64 images each, right? So here I'm saying that I want to pass training set and the batch size is going to be the batch size, which I declared over here. Shuffle the data set, right? So it is always good to shuffle the data set so that if the data for each class is, you know, scattered at a, 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 a collected at one point, it should be scattered at different locations. Um, number of workers should be two for parallel processing and pin memory equals to two so that it can use GPU as well. And same is going with the validation data set, right? So our training loader and validation loaders are ready and you can check out the shape of each loader as well. Each loader will have 64 images. Each image has three um, colors, which since it is a, a colored image, RGB, so that is why it has three dimensions at the beginning and then 128 rows and 128 columns because we have standardized uh, the images in transformation step. Uh, then we are creating the CNN model. By the way, I'll, I'll, I want to tell you over here, if you are not understanding or not following me along over here uh, and you're having some difficulty in understanding what is this deep learning and what am I talking about, what are the layers and what are these things, um, I'll suggest you to check out our course that is called Deep Learning for Beginners. You can check out the link in description and somewhere up, up over here as well. Um, you can you should enroll into this course and you should check out this course. If you're a beginner, this course is surely going to help you out a lot. This is specifically designed to, to learn the basics of deep learning. Um, and then we are creating the CNN model over here. Um, so here, first of all, I'm creating the convolutional layer. And then I'm creating the pooling max pool layer, right? So my architecture is going to be the following. I'll have four convolutional layers and four, four pooling layers. So first of all, convolutional layer, then pooling layer, another convolutional layer, another pooling layer. And this story will go on and on for four times, right? So I'll have four convolution, four pairs of convolutional and pooling layers, right? So you see, this is my first convolutional layer. This is my first pooling layer, second convolutional layer, second pooling layer. And in each layer, you, you can see input channels are going to be three since we have three dimensions uh, and output channels are going to be 16. So output channel, are 16. So these 16 is going to be the input for the next cell, right? Then the kernel size is 5, stride is 1, padding is 0. So I'm just checking it out. Uh, how, how I'm just making it equal to uh, my parameters. And by the way, if again, you have any confusion in what is kernel size, what is stride, what is convolutional layer or what is pooling layer, again, we have another course that is called um, uh, Basics of PyTorch. Uh, you can find the link in description and somewhere up, up over here as well. This course is specifically designed to let you know how you can work with deep learning by using PyTorch, right? Uh, and this project is actually a final project in that particular course. So you will be having a complete idea how to work with, with, with CNNs in PyTorch. Cool. So here, as you can see, fourth convolution layer, fourth max pool layer. Then we have the activation function. I am using leaky relu as an activation function over there. Um, and then we are using a fully connected layer to connect all the neurons of the output of max pool layer, that is the fourth layer. And then we are creating another fully connected layer. So we have two fully connected layers in our architect. So that is the architect of our CNN. And finally, we are creating the forward propagation in which you can see, first of all, we are uh, passing the, the features to first convolutional layer and then passing the output to leaky relu and that output is passed to max pool layer, right? This is first layer. Then in second layer, same thing is happening. Third, third layer, same thing is happening. So the input, uh, the output of each layer is acting as an input to the second layer. And output of second layer is acting as an input to third layer and so on and so forth. So finally, the output of fourth layer will be acting as the input to fully connected layer. And that is how it works. So as you can see over here, we have fourth layer completed. And then the output of fourth layer is acting as the input of fully connected layer. And then we have the second fully connected layer, which is actually our output layer. And finally, we are returning the output. 
So until here, we are our CNN is ready. And then we have to perform the training. So in training, we are going over only 10 epochs over here. Uh, you can go for over 10 epochs as well, according to your need. The error function that we are using is since it is a classification task. So we are using cross entropy loss over here. Uh, learning rate is going to be 0 0.001, but it will be updated according to reduce LR on plateau method. Um, as an optimizer, we are using optim.adam method over here. Now, what is the optimizer? What is the loss function? What is the activation function? Everything is explained in our PyTosh course, for which you can find the link in description. So here for the training, we are creating the lists to store the training loss for the training loss, the validation loss, and the accuracy, right? Then we are simply iterating over the number of epochs. And then inside the loop, we are iterating over uh, over the each training loader, right? So once each training loader is completed, then inside each training loader, we are optimized, we are um, sending the images to the model. Output is stored in the output. And then we are checking out the loss. And based, based upon the loss, we are performing loss dot back propagation so that all the weights will be adjusted accordingly. And then um, here in training set or in training or validation part, we are checking out based upon one epoch of training, one epoch of training on training set, how better our algorithm is performing on validation set or on testing set, right? So here we are performing, we are same, doing the same thing that we are doing in training, but we are just not updating the weights over here, right? So we are simply storing the loss in validation loss and we are storing the accuracy in a uh, correct variable. And finally, here we are calculating and we are actually outputting uh, each matrices, for example, the training loss, the validation loss, or the accuracy after the end of every epoch, right? Just for our learning that after each epoch, how good or how bad our algorithm is performing. So let's check it out. For example, over here, after first epoch or epoch number zero, you can see the loss is 67. 0 0.67 and accuracy is 73, okay? And at second epoch, the loss is 0 0.56, accuracy is 79, which is, which means it is, the accuracy is increasing and loss is decreasing. So fast forward a little bit and uh, here we go. After four epochs, uh, actually it is fifth epoch since a number of epochs are starting from zero. The loss is 0 0.32 and accuracy is 90%, 90.8%. That is great, a massive change. So fast forward, um, and at the end, if we see our training loss was 0 0.14, which was something or somewhere around 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 in the beginning, and validation loss is 0 0.1, which is great. Uh, let's check about the accuracy as well. So, okay, before accuracy, here you can see the training loss and validation loss are plotted over here. So they both are decreasing in kind of same manner, which means that there is no sign of overfitting as well. So if we check out accuracy, in first epoch, accuracy was 73%. In last epoch, accuracy was 96%, which is great, which is great. And we can also plot the accuracy over here like this as well, right? Uh, and then moving on over here, uh, we can see uh, if we pick up any random image from the data set for testing, for example, this image, its actual label is zero, which means that it is it belongs to healthy data set, right? Uh, and if we check out, if we send the same image to our model, right, like this, and we check out the output, and the output is also predicting zero, which means that our prediction is accurate. It's pretty much accurate. So that that's about it. That is how we can predict the brain tumor, how we can predict the brain tumor by using on the basis of MRI image for any patient. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, I, I belong to obviously AI Sciences. You can check out the link of AI Sciences website in the description. If you are starting your journey in artificial intelligence or data science, uh, you can check you can check out our website. We have more than fifty courses available for you that are specifically crafted for the beginners. How they can start their journey, how they can start their journey in data science, artificial intelligence, uh, data engineering, and multiple other domains as well, including cloud computing. So I hope you like the video. Please subscribe the channel, and I'll see you in next video.